As you know from the three dominant news outlets in this country, this just in, you're not dead. Therefore, Scott Morrison handled the COVID crisis as perfectly as he makes curries, which <laughs> scrumptious. I can't tell the difference! That's what you think, isn't it? All because you don't have a spare month like me to sift through the media narrative without the distraction of things like loved ones and a life. You make me sick. Like this video if you think I'm essentially that old man that floats around the bottom of the oil tanker in Waterworld keeping tabs on the oil level. And subscribe if you accept that you're the bad guy with the patch that's pissed off at the facts I'm spouting. And after this, you're just going to close the hatch on me until you need more bad news from me, aren't you? <sighs> what a f***ed business model. The worse the news is, the more I prosper. Sorry, now I'm just stuck on this analogy. I am that old man. That was me during the bushfires. Oh, thank God. Friendly Geordie's Features presents Scovid, a tribute to quite literally the world's ninth crappest leader. Oh yeah, top 10 for something. Roll the intro. We're going to start with a tale of two nations. It shouldn't be. We all know New Zealand's just having a tantrum, and it even looks like they are geographically. <laughs> Except we invented the pea flavour. Never! Having said that, for the first time in my entire life, I am glad New Zealand isn't new Western Australia. And although I maintain it would be very amusing as it would probably have to call itself East Western Australia, I'll let it slide this one time because they become a brilliant point of comparison. It's basically one of those what happened to these two twins separated at birth stories. They play at like 1am on 9 go. Both were blessed with being island nations. Both had months of warning. Both have very similar systems of government. Both have leaders with exceptionally large teeth. Although to give Arden her juice, she really looks like she should be in the big book of British smiles. The big difference was, New Zealand's Labour Party was in power when COVID hit, while here the Tories were in power. And let's be honest, when the f aren't they in power except for some bizarre reason in the 80s when everyone else's Tories were in power, including China, proving, hold on on changing the name New Zealand, we'll change our name to Opposite Land first, and then you change your name to East West Opposite Land. In the meantime, the fact that New Zealand's Workers' Party was in power while our corporate party was in power is just another way of saying New Zealand had a government that listened to experts, while Australia had a government that listened to Clive Palmer. Open up WA's border. My fingers are too chubby to operate Zoom. Who did better? Any global health expert will tell you, and did, that the key to prevention in a pandemic is to act fast. Jacinta Arden acted fast. Unfortunately for us, we have a PM that goes on vacation at the peak of every crisis this nation's ever had. And I'm pretty sure there's a brand of Valium with his face on it called Slow Mo's. Stressed? Don't shit yourself. Take a slow mo. In fact, his government was warned about the spread of corona three weeks before Patient Zero landed in Australia, which, in his defence, he was warned about the 2020 bushfires 12 years before that hit and still did nothing. So three weeks is the blink of an eye for a man who's probably still in the process of blinking his eyes right now. <coughs> Be like watching a season of Dragon Ball Z. <coughs> Think about how much of a warning that is. How big is your beard if you don't shave for three weeks, particularly if you're Indian? If you were even remotely competent as a leader, don't you think you would have stockpiled masks, shut the borders, at least seanced a medieval plague doctor? Mm, have you tried frankincense? Yes. Well, I'm all out of ideas then. Bye-bye. Wait! Wait! You didn't tell me if God's angry at me! Isn't calling on the spirit of doctors before medicine was even a proper science still a better strategy than Scott Morrison's actual strategy, which was, no, that's happening in China, not Chinatown. Christ almighty, keep schools open. Kids obviously need to learn more geography, not less. By the time it hit Australia, we had no test kits, no emergency equipment, no plan. We just winged a pandemic like it was an English speech in year 10. Bill Bowtell, an adjunct professor for infection and immunity at UNSW, stated so succinctly, perfect summary of the Morrison government, not just during the pandemic either, in general. This should be engraved on Scott Morrison's tomb, heaven forbid. Here lies a man who, quote, diligently did not do anything useful. Also, he bared an uncanny resemblance to Dilbert. Conversely, New Zealand had a plan. That's a good start. From the first case hitting New Zealand to the country closing its borders, two weeks. From the first case to nationwide lockdown, a month. Getting shoes from Amazon during the pandemic took three. That should have been Labor's campaign slogan. Labor, 
better delivery of services than Amazon guaranteed. Stop sounding like Australians that are melting. Meanwhile, in Australia, from the first case hitting the shores till the borders being shut, two months. I lived in Malaysia. It has got to be one of the laziest countries on earth. It's pretty much an entire nation of Scott Morrisons. They had a better response than we did. We are so lucky we're an island because under Scott Morrison, we had a comparable response time to the US, all because of wavering, non-stop wavering, always with the stock standard liberal excuse of maintaining business and consumer certainty. Who do you instinctively think generated more business and consumer certainty? New Zealand that said, we're gonna shut the borders on this state followed by a lockdown on this state and did so, or after months of, and uh, we're taking this very seriously. No, we're not, we're not going to shut down the borders. Definitely not gonna shut them down. Oh, shut the borders down now. Two days later. Oh shit, it's not enough. Lock it down, lock it down. This is certainty. Per capita, New Zealand had around seven times less deaths than Australia. In fact, when you exclude Europe, because that continent at the best of times is basically a giant penis without a condom, Australia, had the ninth highest amount of deaths in the developed world, and that was at the peak of the initial outbreak. New Zealand had the least amount of deaths. That's what happens when you have a plan. This is what happens when you have a plan to see the Sharkies. Yeah. If you look at the timeline of the shutdown, it really seems like he built it around. Ah, oh, but the game. Oh, now I've got two disasters to manage. Probably should have left that out as I forgot that my key audience are Aussies and they're probably thinking right now. Putting his team above his country. Now there's a man with his priorities straight. Even I'm currently thinking, yeah, well, what's your problem with that? But the way that I get out of that loop is that I look at it this way. He's a f***ing fat cat. He's infuriatingly regimented psychology of, no, I don't care that the country's on fire, it's the holidays. You know when your dad used to say, we're going away, don't call unless the house is on fire more reasonable than the Prime Minister of Australia. If he was doing that Spider-Man speech, he'd say, now remember, Peter, with great power comes no responsibility, especially after five. Also, before we get flooded with comments of, huh, not gonna mention dictator Dan, cry laugh emoji, what a labor shill. Oh, you wanna go through the stats? No, wanna be smug and leave a dislike. Well, everyone else, you're just gonna have to press the like button, aren't you, to cancel out those awful, awful people. And subscribe as well, so that you may hear yet again. Man, you know who sucks? Scott Morrison. Also, I want to sell you t-shirts for the rest of my life. Language right available at FriendlyGeordies.com. Now, if you want to argue the lockdown killed more people than it saved because of those that lost their job, and I'm basing that off of nothing. They couldn't even go to the Japanese suicide forest because the airports were closed. Fine, but if you base it off of something, those nations that went into quick, harsh lockdowns fared better than those that didn't. Not just in deaths, but economically. And if you really care about jobs, you wait until we get to the federal government's figures. You will not change your mind because you think you're right. But three quarters, that is three in every four deaths, 74% of all COVID related deaths, indisputably, no two ways about it, federal government's fault, 74%. That is a kill rate that most professional Korean gamers would kill for. Fed libs are in charge of nursing homes, and it turns out, very surprising for the libs, they didn't have a plan to help the most vulnerable members of society out, i.e. the elderly. But they did have a plan to make it look like they had a plan to help the elderly. I think it actually would have been less effort if they just helped the elderly. And if anyone in the Australian community should be looked after by this government, it's the elderly. Scott Morrison owes his prime ministership to those whose favorite show is Australia's Funniest Home Videos, and yet he told even his own voter base that they can literally go die for all he cares. They spent months trying to shift the blame to the states, but no, there it is, black and white. The title of the Royal Commission's interim report, set up to probe into this massive government failure, one word, truly extraordinary for a Royal Commission, neglect. If the one word was whoops, it would be less damning. And what if the word was anus? Wouldn't that be f***ing funny, bros? Anyway, the Department of Health then said, fine, plan B, or should I say plan G, as they released a mysterious seventh edition of the updated National COVID-19 Age Care Plan. And what's so mysterious about this seventh edition is that editions one to six don't exist. Who says death isn't funny? They've turned it into a sitcom. Electing the Liberals is like putting George Costanza in charge of the country. Look, Greg Hunt, Minister for Health and Aged Care, 
It's George Costanza at the Yankees. Check out the back of Scott Morrison's head. It's George Costanza's boss in like season 15 because some of his hair's falling out. And Josh Frydenberg? Jerry Seinfeld if he was a Borg. Everything always just works out for me. You can't get a more concrete statement than 7th edition of the updated national COVID-19 aged care plan that the Libs value taking your money to twiddle their thumbs over your nan's life and the lengths that they went to prove that easily rival that of your grandpappy's efforts to defend this country. And thus, they deserve their own day of memorial. Right after Anzac Day, the shirking Anzac Day. Hope you forget. And with that, let us also forget about the COVID deaths because what really matters is the economy. That is, after all, what the Liberals say is most important. After, of course, shots with sleeves rolled up. But if you want to look at numbers, when Labor was in, best economic managers on earth. Liberals, 32nd. I can't make it any clearer than that. Labor up here, Liberals down there. Rudd was the Roger Federer of stimuluses. Morrison was the Leighton Hewitt. I always hear as the counter argument, no, China got us out of the GFC, Rudd had nothing to do with it, he fluked being number one, you know, just how Michael Jordan fluked being number one. It was a stupid narrative invented in the Australian for stupid Australians. Other mineral rich nations in Africa, South America, North America, which China also bought resources from, also avoided the recession and, oh wait actually, no they didn't. Well, to quote Charlie XCX, boom. Not mining boom, just boom. Still by the China narrative? Because this long list of experts, everyone from the IMF to Nobel Prize winning economists to Trump, think Rudd stimulus was the best designed stimulus in the world. But I'm sure you know better stanky mangoes. The other argument I hear from similar avatars, such as stanky tangos, is that we're number one because all the other countries weren't doing good, but now they're doing good, so we're not doing good. What? You're admitting Scott Morrison sucks by saying that, you stupid c that means Scott Morrison is so bad that even when he was given a head start, he still lags. You know why the other countries are doing well now? Because they copied exactly what Rudd did. They, as the Treasury Secretary at the time famously stated, went hard, went early, went houses. Scott Morrison, as Kevin Rudd so cheekily rephrased it, went half measures, went late, and went to Hillsong. <laughs> That's why they're doing better now. Because they basically have Kevin Rudd, except instead of being able to speak Mandarin, he can speak French. Want to know the nitty gritty of how we fell 31 places? The answer will infuriate you, but don't worry, you'll forget about it in like 10 minutes and the cosmic ballet will go on. We'll start with JobKeeper and JobSeeker. Four weeks, Labor and the unions were saying you need to set up income support for when you'll inevitably have to lock the country down, otherwise the economy will tank, and the Liberals were saying, no, we will not look at the UK style system because in an Australian context, that just wouldn't work. Then, as soon as business lobby said, no, actually the unions have it right, we are going to look at the UK style system because in an Australian context, it would totally work. They then got former Labor Minister Greg Cohn Bay to design the income support system because they're not a government, they're corporate consultants pretending to be a government, and so they went to the corporations that owned them and said, I think we should uh, hire an actual government for this one. Great idea, Scott. That's what I'm here for, ideas. That and these parliamentary towels I hand out at the gym. Look, they're just giving them away. The Libs were handed the plan and because remember, they're consultants. I did just tell you that five seconds ago, but just to remind any. <laughs> it then got filtered through those same business lobbies because for a second there, it looked like the Liberals were actually gonna do something in the public interest for once. But this highlights the first major difference in governing styles between Kevin Rudd and Scott Morrison. Kevin Rudd made a stimulus package designed to get the economy moving again. Scott Morrison is a if you want to keep the economy churning during a crunch, you need lots of money pumped into it again, this is the key word, quickly. Each second you wait in a credit crunch is another real estate agent using their real estate license to light up a 40 gallon drum. I don't do more of those uh, proudly sold by stickers. No, you throw in some of your under contract stickers. I need some for keepsake. The best way of accomplishing that is by doing exactly what Rudd did, which is you pump out thousand dollar stimulus checks to everyone in the country, you get on national television and you say, listen here simps, go out and buy a plasma. Yeah, it's 2008 and the word simp doesn't exist yet, but that's how forward thinking I am. Look at the face on Mars a little closer. Knock knock, who's there? Surprise dickheads, it's me again. What was the Liberals response? 
Well, it needs that classic fat man trombone music for how slow it was. Here we go. As the party that hates red tape, they created one of the largest and most pointless layers of private public red tape in Australian history. They gave out $750 checks, not to the employee, the employer who had to apply and were at least a month late. And for most, it was much longer. You might be asking why, and I'm trying to get to that, so shut the f up. That was the government's response. This was the so-called Independent Reserve Bank's response, whose governor is appointed by... Beep, 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 beep. Made a move that was just too coincidental when you zoom out and look at the big picture, and that was major banks, you know, the same outfits the Liberals flogged with wet lettuce after the Banking Commission to punish them for their sins of ripping off hundreds of thousands of Australians and exposing the wider economy to the same practices that caused the global financial crisis. Well, ScoMo, hard worker that he is, the last thing you think when you look at him is beanbag, after voting against the Banking Commission 26 times, he finally saw the light. And for their sins, the banks were to endure the humiliating punishment of printing as much money as they liked. That was their penance. Liberals really living up to the reputation of being tough on crime. Must have got the idea from Hell Lab's ironic punishment division. So, you like money, eh? Uh -huh. Well, have all the money in the world! <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. The US economy tanked in 15 minutes. They allowed 8% of the GDP to be invented out of thin air. Poof, presto, changeo. 90 billion exists now. That went to the big banks who, wink, were to help out struggling people with their mortgages and business loans. At least that's the excuse they sold to the... Well, not public, because no one cares what the Reserve Bank does. It's not as interesting as... Holy moly! Close second though, this is what it looks like inside the Reserve Bank. Oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. So that's what happened to Joe Hockey. But if anyone bothered to look into it, which I think was just Michael West and maybe one guy with glasses that they cut to on Q&A that never says anything, just looks pensive. But the reality was that they job keepered quantitative easing. They allowed the banks to dole out 8% of the GDP, how they saw fit, no strings attached. Well couldn't have gone to a more honest bunch unless of course they included that friend who's a rat in YOLO which was filmed years ago so maybe he actually is the head of ANZ now and before we tie this all up let's all appreciate just how much the Liberals will do for their true constituents, the ASX 100. The so-called party of small business deliberately starved small businesses of money, and that was not manslaughter, by the way, that was murder. They obviously knew small businesses did not have the savings to pay their staff to do nothing for a month. A big business did. Companies like Ernst & Young, Westpac, high-end fashion stores like Lowe's. By comparison, Ahab's Fijian Corner Store is that little model fort of Minister they use in Lord of the Rings. It's charming. But it wouldn't be much use unless the invading army was a bunch of quail vikings. For the bird seed! Look at this. 10% instantly paused trading. It's looking like 8% of small businesses will be permanently killed. There's no way that that would naturally be occurring. They wanted those businesses to go belly up. Honestly, what is it with the liberals and wanting things to go belly up? Then after all those small businesses died, hey, JobKeeper just kicked in. What a coincidence. Sorry we're a bit late. <laughs> uh, saved a bit of money though with all the people that should have been on JobKeeper now on JobSeeker, am I right? You gonna police JobKeeper? No. Nope. Michael West, aka Highbrow Current Affair, has caught out 40% of the ASX 300 claiming JobKeeper. I'm proud of that call, by the way, Westy. I really think that you should make your slogan, Michael West Media, classy, a current affair. It could be car car for short. What have you got to say for yourself, Mr. Mervac? No response? Typical. So thanks to the Liberals' deliberate under-policing of this purposefully delayed cash flash, some of the most profitable companies in the country who needed JobKeeper like Slash needs new guitars had the biggest expense to a company, which is labour, brought down to zero dollars, thanks to you, the taxpayer, during a crisis. Who says the Liberals are tough on welfare, am I right? Because I personally think they're not tough on welfare. Ooh, no wonder the press thinks I'm, quote, controversial. You combine that with the fact they gave the banks permission to dole out large, unbelievably cheap loans, which they obviously wanted to give out to people they knew would be able to pay it back. So, you know, your neighbour, Mr. Multiplex. So if you're one of the largest corporations in the country who's just had their profits bolstered thanks to the nation going into a trillion dollars of debt so you can pay your staff, 
and you were given access to unlimited cheap loans and your smaller competition is lying on the ground like a bunch of cockroaches doing that sad little twitching legs in the air dance thanks to Mr. Moratine here. What do you do? All right. Let's make some puffs. The Liberals used the biggest health and economic crisis in living memory as a Trojan horse to dole out nearly a trillion dollars that we don't have to their donors just so they could expand their already impregnable market dominance even further. Almost every metric we have of measuring the economy during COVID, down. Except corporate profits. They made sure those were high. Higher than they were in 2018 when there was no crisis which you know Liberal voters would say, well, it would have been worse under Labor. Ah, okay. Starting to know how Greek grandmas feel when they say, you're killing me. Look at the stats. Labor took the economy to the world-class St. Rudd's Institute of Mercy where it got the best doctors on earth tending to its wounds, while the Liberals took it to Hostel and jammed their finger right in the wound, twisting it around. Yeah, you like that, Australia? Nah, well, twisties likes the twisting, tough twisties. Meanwhile, Labor was asking the Libs for months, hey, while you're playing whack-a-mole with small businesses, what happens to the people who'll have no income for, what, three to four months? Get ready for this, this is insane. Oh, don't worry, Albo. We'll let them ransack their superannuation. Yeah, the real Canberra Raiders. Talk about fucked. Paul Keating is constantly railing against the Liberals' malicious attacks against probably his most important contribution to Australian society, and that's saying a lot because he did come up with the nickname for Peter Costello, the talking knee. But superannuation, what a beautiful concept. If it worked the way that he set it up, which was to take 12 to 15% of a worker's income, using the power of what Einstein supposedly said, the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. And the second most powerful force in the universe is PewDiePie's g Fuel. The point is, Keating Super would have solved what will happen when Australia inevitably falls off the population cliff and becomes a giant understaffed nursing home, which I think, due to the Liberals' current neglect of nursing homes, they're just testing how far they can push old people and still get their vote. I reckon it's infinite. I reckon they could make nursing homes the seventh layer of hell, permanently chewed on by Robert Menzies himself, and Martha will still be saying, out the side of his mouth, well, it'll be worse under Labor. Ever since superannuation was created, the Liberals have been doing very c***y things to undermine it. But allowing people to take 20 grand out during COVID just so they could strangle small business. You won't be needing this. They made the poorest people in the country, because that's who was taking their super out. It certainly wasn't hedge fund managers saying, hmm, tough times indeed. Better mess around with one of my best personal investments to put food on the table. The poor paid the lion's share of the first stimulus. 32 billion from people super, 30 billion from the government, which the poor are also paying for through their taxes, which is the exact opposite of what should happen during a crunch. You should be giving the poor money because they're the ones that are gonna see the Harvey Norman ads with their thousand dollar checks in hand. New lazy boy recliner seat, only $999. F me, we'd have change left over. I did a very rough estimate of how much that'll cost this nation, and I was assuming, just to be generous, as Lord knows Scott Morrison needs it. He's very testy at the moment. He hasn't been on holiday in two months. Let's say the average person withdrawing 20 grand was actually a lot older than they would have been because I don't have the exact figure, so 30 to 35. The age you convince yourself that the life you are aiming for is the life you have. You know how much of that would cost this country come retirement age? $877 billion. Raise yourselves, guys. Another controversial statement from, quote, controversial labor line comedian coming at you fast, but that's a lot of money. It actually means, seeing as a lot of the people withdrawing were in their 20s, that the liberals in all likelihood have cost this nation's poor well over a trillion dollars. Just so Glencore can write a letter to their shareholders that says, this uh, line went up for three months. How nasty can you get? Your stepmum is less nasty. Think about how much money these c**ts cost the nation. A trillion from super. Probably trillions more from not increasing super to the percentage Keating had envisioned. If it was up to Labor, our mines would have been nationalised, meaning we would have gotten all the wealth from the mining boom. So that's another trillion that was siphoned off to foreign multinationals thanks to the Libs. Trillions more that they're doing everything they can to quash in green tech, see Ross Garneau's superpower. And those are just a few examples. And we're already conservatively up to $4 trillion poorer. 
This doesn't include the hundreds of billions they squander in indefensible middle class voter bribery doled out like it's soup for the homeless. Please sir, I want some more floors. Floors? You want floors? All right, but you can only have two more. The latest example is Home Builder, which is class act economist Emma Dawson wrote about it. If you set out to design a fiscal stimulus measure that would fail to meet any objective economic criteria, you couldn't do much better than this. They did do better, by the way. She gave them too little credit. Labor's counter offer was, how about instead we spend tax money on something other than buying folk? You're crazy, Albert. No, no, hear me out. Let's use the money to build public housing. That's right, instead of home builder, pov home builder. Pov homes for pov Unlike home builder that did nothing to stimulate the economy, it was supposed to generate 140,000 jobs. Ah, oh, the same amount the Liberals destroyed by privatising tapes. There you go, there's something I can guarantee you'll never be brought up in public trivia unless Tony Burke starts a night called Burko's Catchphrase. And even then, due to his love of music, it'd probably be mostly questions about the soprano sax which I have many, including, is it a sax or is it a hilarious looking clarinet? And has anyone except this one man in this one Sting video clip ever played one? Home Builder didn't even create 10,000 jobs because the tradies that applied for it, and there were f all who did, after a month of it being activated, about 250 applications were processed. So I'm guessing all of them were just staffers for Scott Morrison. As who else knew about it? Me, that's it. I was keeping an eye on it thinking, I would apply for this if I could, but I can't, so can't. Labor's plan would have caused a construction boom. It did. It was the same plan from the GFC. All the money would be going to repairs and new home builds of places the tradies don't own. Well, I mean, we all own public homes, don't we? One day I'm gonna walk into one and drink their flat Coke right out of the fridge. What the f are you doing, mate? Collecting my dividends! <laughs> investment. It had a proven track record of stimulating the economy and if we learn anything from Houzo's, it also would have produced hilarious results. I'm pretty sure Jabba actually needs housing commission these days and I don't want him out on the streets. That guy was on Channel V. That should have been Labor's slogan to sell their policy. Jabba needs a hut. Anyway, now that we've addressed the Liberals as per usual, bending over not just themselves backwards, the nation in order to assist banks, property developers and the business council. Pfft. Business Council. Who says the Liberals don't like unions? That's all their donor base is covered, isn't it? Actually, am I missing anyone? No, I don't think I am. Good night, everyone. Sign up to Patreon. Please share and... Oh, back with a vengeance, boys. Like the video and press the notification bell if you were duped. You thought I forgot about the fossil fuel industry, didn't you? Well... I didn't, so you're just going to have to sit around and not get Charlie's Charcoal Chicken for a couple of minutes longer, alright? Actually, the fact that Charlie's Charcoal Chicken has the word colon in it reminded me of the fossil fuel industry. Good on you, Charlie. I deserve respect for slightly more reasons than merely the fact that I'm a chicken that owns a top hat. The Liberals, how surprising is this for the worst performers on climate change in the developed world, wanted a gas-led recovery. That's what they pitched. Now to link back to Emma's claim, here is the real bottom of the barrel. You could not, if you tried, design a worse recovery program than a gas-led recovery. Emu farms, time zone shares, government-funded Acon tour. I'm telling you now, an Acon-led recovery. In fact, scratch that, a Chumbawamba-led recovery would have been better. They at least understand the basic economics of play that if you get knocked down, you're supposed to get back up again. You put a million dollars into basically any industry, on average, you're gonna create 3.4 jobs. You put a million into gas, chop the three clean off, 0.4 jobs. This is how much better renewables are, 10 times as many jobs. According to ACF, a green-led recovery would have created a million jobs. A million. To put that in perspective, that is like one street in Beijing, all with jobs. As a result, Labor and the GFC made Australia one of the top 10 best places to invest in renewables in the world. Renewables are better for the economy overall, as once they're installed, they permanently bring down energy prices by as much as 70%. As to quote a PewDiePie ad for one of his games, it's free. A lot of PewDiePie references in this. Look, I just think he can still beat T-Series, all right? How you doing, fellow kids? One day I'm going to do an entire stand-up show about how much Australia stands to profit from becoming a green economy, but how Hollywood exec is this? Short answer, 
trillions. As opposed to what we stand to gain from a gas-led recovery, which is nothing. Gas is extracted by massive multinational companies. They're some of the biggest tax evaders there are, and the Liberals allowed them to start selling all the gas in the eastern states internationally, which quadrupled the price here, which is infinitely more expensive than something which is produced for free! Because as PewDiePie clearly points out, the game is available for free, and that's a great price. I'm sorry, there's just too much wisdom in his ads. It's the data ching of our times, the shilling of whatever the f that game is called. I'm betting my entire life though that it's just data mining for the Swedish monarchy. Then again, Scott Morrison also has his own moments of wisdom. He also said something very profound, which is that whoever's in charge for the next five years will determine the direction of Australia for a generation. In other words, if he wins the next election and is able to force Australia's energy transition from coal to gas instead of coal to renewables, that infrastructure will be locked in for a generation. Hundreds of billions of dollars spent on the worst economic decision you could possibly make, which will have ongoing ricochet damage as it deprives Australia of hundreds of billions of dollars in growth that a renewable-led recovery would have produced. So, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think that the COVID Recovery Commission Morrison set up and filled with gas execs, who then turned around and said, you want my advice? I think you should go with gas. Might have had intentions in recommending gas that weren't exactly pure. You starting to see the pattern? Labor created a stimulus that worked for the country. The Liberals created a stimulus that worked for their donors. ScoMo, or as Albo likes to call him, Promo, after all, he was a f***ing marketer, which to this day I find to be the most disturbing fact about a Prime Minister apart from maybe the thought that Harold Holt is probably in North Korea as we speak, currently asking. Ah, oh, but I'll miss the Graham Kennedy show tonight. Again. This is the Graham Kennedy show started five years after he disappeared. What? You don't know what I know. If Scott Morrison wasn't such a brilliant marketer, JobKeeper would have been called Market Share Booster, Home Builder, Housing Bubble Inflator, handing like 90 billion over to banks? Shut the f up. And the gas led recovery would have been called the gas led recovery. Really dropped the ball on that one. Anyway, that is why this number is all the way up here and this number is all the way down there. When Labor was in charge of handling a crisis, Australia was ranked 8th, maybe ninth at worst at job creation in the world. You know where we're ranked under Mr. Smee from Peter Pan? 92nd. The most amount of jobs over any nine month period that were shed during the GFC, 23,250. Most kids in year 10 have more followers on TikTok than people who lost their job during the GFC thanks to Kevin Rudd. In fact, I bet there's more people than 23,250 right now who are being hit over the head with a coconut and I'm going to do my bit right now to add to the number. Ah! Oh! Jesus. That actually hurt. No, yeah, of course it f***ing did. It's a coconut. Dude, <laughs> like in the cartoons, it wouldn't. I wasn't... Well, I think that this is a more than accurate time to shill Patreon. Sign up to Patreon today with Friendly Geordies for more hilarious bits like the coconut hit over the head. Your, your money keeps us in business. <laughs> she did Why did you do that? That wasn't even in the script. <laughs> it was just there. It was just there. And if you don't sign up to Patreon, we won't have money for coconuts. That teeny job loss blip was corrected just two months later under Labor, but you can bet your vagina there isn't going to be a correction under the libs. Just chuck the word vagina in there so everyone's ears pricked up. <laughs> what about vaginas? Nothing. Keep paying attention to something even more interesting. Historical employment figures. Pressures. Under the Liberals, we did not see 23,250 jobs shed over a nine month period. We did not see 50,000 or 100,000 or even 200,000. We saw close to 400,000 jobs lost. 23,000 versus 400,000. Just as bad as each other, am I right? Now, Tara Cash wearers will rightfully point out, well, COVID had a bigger impact on the global economy than the GFC, and we were doing better because of all the other countries that were doing worse. Look at the numbers. They don't lie. Other countries are performing better than they did in the GFC because this time they use Papa Rudd's old style secret stimulus sauce while we use Uncle Scamash Crap Curry Select. Rudd's original stimulus was about 4.69% of the GDP while Scott, being the human equivalent of home brand, went, oh, I don't have the recipe on me. I'll give you the recipe, Scott. No, no, I don't need it from you. That's fine. I'll just improvise. Uh, 1% of the GDP, that'll do. Sure did. 
Negative growth of 6.3% annually. The worst figures on record because recession is a dish best served cold. During the GFC, those other countries weren't using Rudd's stimulus plan, as how could they? They didn't have insights into Kevin Rudd's mind, as Rove Live's Kevin Rudd PM didn't air in Luxembourg. But during COVID, they had the recipe. And look at those numbers. New Zealand suffered a disastrous setback in June of 12.2% negative GDP growth. It then bounced back in September with positive 14%. Ireland went backwards 3.2% in June, recovered with a thumping 11.1% growth in September. Australia, worst numbers of any recession that Australia has ever endured since records of recessions began. Not that we weren't in a recession before, by the way. Australia's been in a per capita recession since 2018 when economic conditions were perfect and the only other countries on earth that were in recession were like Jamaica and Trinidad Tobago. So come on, party of strong economic management, they're literally as good as stoners. Out of all of the shenanigans that the Liberals get up to, the myth that they're better economic managers is the one that makes me understand how Ren felt when Stimpy messed with his collection of deadly viruses, which does make me question my social skills as it took that for me to say, mm, Rand angry. Such an entrenched, century long lie that only exists because of the complacency of the completely corrupt press that inflames it at every opportunity they can to tar factually the best economic managers on earth while, how criminal is this? Pretending that the best economic managers are a party that is down there with not even banana republics, dreadlock republics, debt, not that it matters, this is another lie the press keeps stoking into the public's consciousness like it's the verbal equivalent of lead poisoning, but one more time, it doesn't matter if you have debt, what matters is what you spend the debt on. And Rudd spent it on green technology that has led to Australia being run by 50% renewables no matter what the Liberals do to sabotage it. Again, Labor being in power for those five years to find the generation because they spent it on public housing, the biggest infrastructure spend since World War II that has single-handedly kept in growth despite the appalling economic management of the Liberals. And just a minor footnote, just for those playing at home, they also completely avoided the global financial crisis. Cost? 11.8% of the GDP. That's hundreds of thousands of people kept in work. Another decade of uninterrupted growth. Bargain. Anyone who says that that was because of Howard, you really should see my stand-up show available at friendlygeordies.com. It's just this, but less relevant because I'm bitching about things that happened in the 90s. So purchase it today, the show that should have been called Friendly Geordies Presents Nostalgic Whining. What did we get from the Liberal step? Seriously, what did we get? The Liberals during COVID, instead of spending it on renewables, went for bang, bang, bang. Ugh, what a dump. I think I need a holiday. We got a bunch of small businesses completely destroyed. We got no investment in educational health. We got the weakest economic conditions we've had since World War II. And oh, minor tidbit, went into recession. Price, 45.1% of the GDP. A trillion dollars of debt to go into a recession. A trillion dollars that as Josh Frydenberg himself stated, future generations will be paying this back. All of us enslaved to this massive burden that your kids will work to pay back so banks, property developers, miscellaneous multinationals could transfer trillions of dollars of wealth out of the country when it was at its weakest. That was how Scott Morrison really made the best of a bad situation. Anyway, I'm just making this because you know come election time the Libs are going to run the platform of The only other country you know of is America and we did better than that so shut up and vote one SCOMO! But it had nothing to do with you, dickhead. It was the states that kept that shit under control and you just made a committee that you could hog some of the credit for while the states were saying to you, yeah, yeah, just, just go stand over there, Scomo. Over here? Yeah, yeah, over there. I'm just doing this so the big picture is there because the press certainly won't paint it for you. When you actually look at it, when you really step back and look at what the Liberals did over the last year, truly astonishing just how much the Liberals see you as nothing more than a battery that they can suck energy from to power PWC, and that's it. Even in a pandemic, it did not stop them from being as self-interested as they could possibly be, and that's why I want you to subscribe and then get two of your friends to subscribe and then click the notification bell because the only people piecing this together are Michael West, Independent Australia, and me who spends most of his time thinking about how to childishly insult journalists, which, to give you a preview, <clears throat> Hamish McDonald, more like Hamish McDickhead. <laughs> yeah! That deserves a-
I want you to get your mates to subscribe because we've got to get more Australians aware of how truly vicious the Liberals are as the scope and depth shocks even me and I've been doing this shit for years. If you'd like to sign up to our Patreon, link in the description as more patrons means that we can produce more content and these videos in particular are very resource training to produce so patrons are as welcome as UNICEF in chat. And finally, make means of the information you saw in this video. Send them to Friendly Geordie's Facebook because if we do a meme review of the best ones, that is going to spread. Pretty stupid understanding of how memes work. Should know that. Oh, it's like a virus, like COVID. Good at spreading information, aren't they? Almost as good as the gyrocopter. Thank you for watching this long video, but I think you'll agree that it was very important to put together. And remember, Yilmaz was a real person. Stop asking me. Get a brush shirt at FriendlyJordies.com before we sell out and have to reorder. No, no, we're doing it again. That's right. The net is that Boxing Day sale where mums step on each other's eyes in stilettos just to get discount dishes. All day, every day of the year. Thanks for watching. Now back to your regular viewing of who can bench more, weightlifters or bodybuilders. Please share and comment below. Come in.